Hey everyone, this is Wes Fryer, and today I'd like to share how to basically make brisket on a budget. Today we're going to talk about making brisket on a budget and by budget I mean I have a hundred dollar portable smoker that I bought for camping this summer and this isn't super super fancy expensive but I think these little different uh, you know, ingredients and supplies and things like that uh, can really help make a better brisket and I've learned some things as I've been experimenting and that's what I want to share. I'm going to be using foil so we're going to be cooking or smoking to 190 before we take out um, the brisket and we wrap it and cook it um, till the end. Um, I uh, do like just Texas uh, brisket so um, I've got salt and pepper and I've actually just mixed it in a 50% uh, percent, uh, 50 percent, uh, mixture so I just have a half a cup of each um, but that's just pretty basic. I've tried some other things but this this is what what my favorite is. Um, one thing I'm going to experiment with today is just a bonding agent. Some people don't like to do this. They just put the seasoning right on their brisket. I'm going to go ahead and use just some plain yellow mustard as a bonding agent. This is critical. Um, this is my temperature probe. And so uh, you really, this is a thermo probe, uh, temperature probe. It's got two probes. It's got one that's going to um, be ambient inside the smoker. And then the other one is going to go inside the meat. But this is absolutely critical. If you don't have a good uh, temperature probe. Don't go off of what you have on your grill. Uh, you really need to know exactly what the temperature of your meat is. Um, something else I'm going to be using today are some disposable um, nitro gloves. Um, these were, you know, just a few bucks and these are disposable. I'm going to be using those to handle my meat. Um, we got the meat. Obviously, this is a critical part. I've been to Costco and used Costco brisket before, which is better quality. Uh, this is actually just a $38 brisket at Walmart. Um, you can see that it has a ton of fat on it. Of course, briskets that aren't trimmed have lots of fat. And so it's really important that you get your brisket trimmed up. Um, that's the most time consuming part actually of preparing a brisket. And we'll be speeding that part up so it's not you know so boring to be able to watch. Um, ideally, I would love to have a larger cutting board. Um, this is a pretty good one, but you know, it's not larger. You can always get more stuff, but hey, this is making brisket on a budget. So uh, other thing that's really critical are sharp knives. All right. These are not super expensive knives, but they are sharp. And so I picked up for, I think, huh, maybe 12 bucks or something like that, a sharpener on Amazon. Actually, most of the stuff comes from Amazon and Walmart. Uh, this just has three different um, levels of sharpening. And so I've already sharpened my, my knives today so that I'm ready. Another thing that's gonna be important are some gloves that are gonna help us handle the brisket, especially when it's hot. Now, my smoker is small and I'm actually going to be trimming the brisket and then cutting it in half so that it will fit on my smoker. But um, as you're handling that hot meat, uh, you, you wanna have some gloves to be able to do that. Um, you're gonna want some wood chips. I'm gonna be using apple wood chips uh, for the smoking today. And um, I honestly haven't been able to tell a huge difference, you know, with hickory or mesquite or apple. But anyway, a fruit wood that you're gonna use for smoking is good. Uh, I'm also gonna be using an injector. So this is the thing that kind of looks pretty wild. Um, this is a marinade injector. And so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be uh, mixing up a little marinade. I guess I don't have those ingredients with just some apple juice and some beef broth. And I'm going to uh, put that you know, in, in a, a cup and then I'm going to be putting that inside the brisket. And so that's just gonna help a little bit with the flavor. Um, I'll probably put a little Worcestershire in there as well. Uh, just up to you, you know, what you're gonna do. But uh, hey, you know, nothing says I'm a serious brisket smoker than an injector that looks like that. Last thing is, this is the size of the grills that I am actually cooking on. So when we go out and put it on the smoker, you're gonna see I've got two levels and that's why I'm gonna have to cut my brisket in half so that they each, um, you know, fit here. Lower is going to cook faster. So I want the thicker meat to be below and I'm going to want the smaller meat to be above. My temperature probe is going to be the thickest part of my brisket. And then lastly, this is the base. <laughs> the first time I ever smoked with my smoker, I kind of had this reversed. Uh, this is the tr um, tray where the smoking chips go. And you want this to be lowest and you want it to be directly above your flame. I'm going to be using a propane smoker today. And so unlike more expensive smokers, electrics and whatever, uh, you can just have to put it in here and not do anything. I am actually going to have to go out 
about every 30 minutes, definitely every 45 or 60 minutes, and replace the chips that are in here because these are going to burn and they're going to smoke, and that's the what's going to, going to make the smoke. I'm also going to be keeping this water basin uh, filled with water, and I probably am going to smoke, you know, somewhere around uh, six to eight hours. My um, my smoker actually, I think, is a little bit warmer than I would ideally like. I will be turning it down to medium. And it's going to say that it's keeping it at about 200, 200 225, 250 degrees. Um, so I think those are the main things. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the packing off of this brisket. You do want to make sure your brisket, before you trim it, um, is cold. It's going to be better if the brisket is closer to room temperature when you put it on. Uh, that's just generally uh, a good rule because that's less that the, the you know grill and the smoker is going to have to heat it up but it's a lot easier to cut fat off if you have it cold. So we've taken this out of the fridge. I'm gonna take off the plastic and we're gonna get this thing trimmed. All right, we're done trimming and that probably didn't look very pretty. I sure have a lot more respect for professional butchers or even more skilled amateur butchers after having trimmed some of my own briskets. You can, of course, buy your brisket already trimmed, but it's gonna be more expensive. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is like a pretty inexpensive brisket. It's a $38 brisket, so I could definitely trim some more. I wanna leave some of the, of the fat on there for marbling. Um, I've definitely gotten in and taken a lot of the fat that's out here in the tip out. Uh, you know, this isn't beautiful. I'm sure I'm going to be able to do much better, you know, years from now when I have trimmed a lot more briskets. Uh, but hey, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. And so what I'm going to do now, um, in the past, I've usually just taken my salt and pepper and just put it right on the brisket. I've, I've cut it because of the size of my smoker and I've just gone with that. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually, uh, use some, uh, just regular, um, mustard as a bonding agent and I'm going to, um, kind of lather that all over the brisket. started the smoker, got it going and heating up there. Um, I went ahead and started it on high. And so now I am going to be ready to come put this bad boy on. And again, if I had a larger uh, smoker and, and you know, more expensive, this is a hundred dollar smoker. I think this is about the cheapest you can do to start getting into smoking meat. Um, you know, I'm gonna, I, I have to split this into, into two parts in order to make it fit. Um, but you know what? I found that the flavor is fantastic and I don't think it's going to be a problem.
what I'm going to do, this, who knows, this, this probe, I'm going, put, I'm, going to, I'm going to put the probe more into the middle and see what it says. Yeah, hey, that's not that bad, actually. It says we're at about 178 here in the middle. So, and this is the one that's the, that's the lowest. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this out, and I'm going to put this on my foil. So you can see there's a pretty sizable difference here, you know, bottom to top. Neat temperatures and all that. Here, let's see what this guy is. This is on the top. And the smoker. Yeah, this is only this is only 142. So this is quite a bit. This actually, huh, this guy is not ready to wrap yet. Because ideally I'm gonna let that come up to about 165. So I'm not even gonna wrap that one yet. Alright, so we're interspersing a different weekends brisket cooking with the original video uh, that I shot actually, what, two weeks ago or something. Um, I have just taken uh, this brisket off at 160, um, 167, which is just about perfect. You want to take it off at 168 and wrap it. And you can see, da da da, we actually have some butcher paper. So I am double wrapping to uh, go ahead and put it back on the grill. And so, um, one of the most important things to keep in mind, make sure you can follow me up, my photographer daughter. I've actually, the, I've already got uh, briskets uh, <laughs> that were, were heated over 205 degrees, actually they're probably like about 215, wrapped in towels and in here, and those were the briskets which were on the lower level. And so there's really, on this grill, one of the important things to keep in mind is there's a big, big difference between the top rack and the lower rack. The lower rack really cooks a lot faster. So I've got to put some more water in here, and I'm going to go ahead and put some more wood chips in here, uh, which, yes, you have to do that quite a bit, uh, probably about every 30 or 45 minutes. Well, we've been smoking for about five hours, and one of the things that I've been doing, uh, I probably should have done about every 30 minutes, but maybe it's been like every 45 minutes or an hour, is I've changed out my wood chips. And so... That's one of the big reasons, I think. You probably don't want to use this as your full-time smoker all the time, maybe. Um, hey, this is what I've got, so it's working well. And when I'm camping, I mean, this is the smoker that I'm going to take. But um, you, you know, are going to probably want to, you know, have something that doesn't require as, as much uh, regular, regular uh, maintenance. So I have been putting in my wood chips, and I've been putting in some water. Um, and so I found that a nice little set of ice grips like this works pretty well to be able to do that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my lid and then I'm going to put my wood chips in. This one, I'm going to go ahead and take off, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap him uh, the same way that I wrapped the other one, and then I'm going to put him back in until his temperature gets to be, um, you know, over 200. I think, you know, maybe 205, something like that. So we're going to go, go wrap this guy now. All right, so this guy has been resting in here for about yeah, an hour. And we're going to let it rest some more, but I'm going to go ahead and take this one out, just stack them, put this in, and yeah, I, uh, I think it's great to just use a regular styrofoam cooler like this, and this is actually an Omaha meat one we got a long time ago, and we're going to let this rest for um, a while longer, we'll probably just... Uh... All right, it is the time of truth. Uh, yeah, got a little cleaned up here for supper time, and we have been 
resting the first brisket for two hours, which is actually uh, the right time that you want to let it rest for. So I'm going to go ahead and cut into it, and we're going to see how the, um, the thick brisket, so I think this is uh, actually the tip, but we're going to cut into it and see. Anything that's too hot, or too hot, anything that is cooked too long, we're going to cut up as burnt ends, and uh, I don't know, we'll see, see how this is going to be. Ooh, yeah. I think it looks great. Um, it doesn't have a smoke ring, maybe, um, like you might have on some brisket that, yeah. But hey, I think, I think we're looking, I think we're looking pretty good. All right, so, I mean, what would this be if we didn't actually taste it on camera? Uh, yeah, we've tasted it a little bit and we verified. So I'm, I'm gonna let the um, other brisket, the flat, that we had to smoke another hour, go ahead and keep resting. This is gonna be enough for us to eat for dinner tonight. Um, but then we'll go ahead and cut into that and see how that is. So let's see how, how it tastes. Hmm. I would say it's perfect. <laughs> Our dinner got delayed, and so we actually had time for this second brisket to rest for a full two hours. So here we go. Uh, just a little bit uh, over 200. So I think I think we want to be something like 205 or something like that. So this has rested for the full um, two hours, and it looks like actually I kind of think the other. It's looking a little bit better. The brisket, ooh, but look, got some smoke ring, we got some good bark. Um, this brisket, so this is a little, this is actually, you can tell how much leaner it is. Um, and this was again, the flat. And so, huh, looks like we're gonna actually have, have two choices here. So this particular brisket looks like it's gonna be the, lean cut. The moist, that's what it is, yes. So we got the, the moist brisket here, we got the lean brisket here. Let's do a little taste of the lean. Oh yeah. So, hope this has been helpful to you. Good luck with your own <coughs> your own brisket. Man, there's a little salt and pepper on that baby. But it's good. So good luck to you. And uh, let me know in the comments if this is helpful and how this works for your own brisket smoking, especially if you're trying to use the $100 propane smoker that uh, I used to do this.